Danny Bagwell running third at an accident much like this in yesterday's Dash Series race. You can see the front away. wheel is gone off of uh, Casey's car, but the roll cage that Buddy was talking about, that's all in this area here, and of course that's where the driver sits over in this area. So, so that part held up well. I'm still, I cannot understand where Adam Petty went during that wreck, but he made it through there. Now the roll cage in this car comes up and over and so virtually surrounds the driver. There are big bars in the doors, and then all along here, you see these bars. That's part of the roll cage structure that connects back to the frame. The driver is really encased in a steel cocoon there, so he's protected as much as possible. And you even have a bar that goes here and back down this way in the center part of the car to keep the middle part of the top from caving in. There's a window net on the left side and one up in the ceiling to help keep the driver contained and safe. Dick Bergman? Jason Radcliffe is... Uh... Casey Atwood's crew chief of this accident happened right in front of you. What is it like to watch your driver flip right in front of your pit? Well, I, I can't explain it. I'm still pretty shook up right now, but he's okay. Uh, he talked to us as soon as the car came to a stop, but I'm still looking for my heart around here somewhere on the ground. It's pretty rough. We had a, we had a good shot at it, uh, and he did everything he could. Uh, we got good engines from Ron Hutter. We want to thank Castro. Uh, We'll get him next time. The most important thing right now is he's okay. Yeah, it sure is. Casey Atwood's all right. Everybody is very relieved about that, Mike. And he'll be credited with 16th place finish, Dick Bergeron, one lap down. Watch that number 27 car on the left side of your screen. Andy Hillenberg gets in the back of him, and he gets into the outside wall. You can see the 18 car there. The hood's all torn up on it where he got in the back of Casey Atwood. It was right up and almost over Mike McLaughlin. Back down on the back end and then back to the front end. Here goes the radiator and the springs. Now the good part is that probably looks really bad to the racing fan, but it's sliding on the roof. That's where all the roll cage is. It does not start turning over until it scrubs off a tremendous amount of speed. Now watch him when he hits the grass here. It'll turn over several times there, but the speed is down where it's not like a 190 miles an hour crash. Casey Atwood's Daytona Dream ended one lap too soon. Watch right here when they make contact. He's in a straight line, makes contact there without Andy Hillenberg, who was right behind him, run right in the back of him. And you see McLaughlin lose control there after he bounced off of Hillenberg as Atwood flew up and over him. Here's a look from behind. Didn't take much, but right into the back and turned him right into the wall. You know, it almost looked like Mike McLaughlin might have been pushing Andy Hillenberg, and he had no way to back off. They were coming down to get the white flag, and certainly were going for it. Watch this. You're riding with Mike McLaughlin. No. No. Definitely Andy Hillenberg got in the back of him. That's all. That... <laughs> well, we've heard that too much today. Wow. the officials with the caution flag out very quickly as leader Randy LaJoy came to the flag. But as we mentioned, LaJoy not sure if, if he had passed under the caution or not, came around at speed. See him coming in a straight line there. They make contact. You'll see 27 just turn right from the contact from behind. When that car gets sideways to the wind, a little bit of uncontrollable lift there. And amazingly, Hillenberg comes on around to finish in fourth place. You see the damage to the right front corner, but like you say, Ned, he did make it around. And the best thing that happened to Casey Atwood inside that car is that each one of those impacts took off a little more speed, a little more momentum. Exactly. As it went over and around. If that had happened right there while he was still running 180 miles an hour, it would have been much worse. Wild ride. Let's see from the blimp and see the relationship. That white car, McLaughlin, you see, is a couple of feet back of Hillenburg. They just touch. 
Boy, what a shot. That tells the story. McLaughlin, 34, almost gets through there. A wild ride for 18-year-old Casey Atwood, a brush with the wall for 18-year-old Adam Petty, and the fellow they both call the old man proves once again at Daytona that old age and experience is a match for youth and enthusiasm. Ken Squire is in victory lane. With a man that's won it for the second time, ready to come out after a great win of this classic, here's Randy LaJoy of Norwalk, Connecticut, out of par number one. And the celebration is well underway. <laughs> Hey, what a great ride. You did it on fumes in 1997. What did you do it on today? Just plain hotter horsepower. And, you know, I got to thank James Finch and Phoenix Construction Racing. These guys are an absolute great race team. Uh, you know, we got a couple of great associate sponsors here. We got Bob Evans Restaurant, Sandy King. Come on this morning. Uh, the Edgewater Beach Resort's a fan of my city. We're looking for that big one, you know. So hopefully this will bring it on. And, uh, you know, this race team's going for that cup again. And uh, I can't wait to, to get after it again. What a way to start the Bush season by victory lane here. Did you see any of what was going on behind you? How many times? Uh, that's why I wanted to keep it behind me, you know. Uh, that's one good thing. This, this race car, we had trouble at one time. We had a left rear tire come loose on us, had to come into pits. And I thought our day was over, but uh, thankfully they caught a caution and we got our lap back and it really helped us out because it put us back in the lead. And, uh, you know, I seen those young guys, you know, Adam Petty's been on my butt all year. He said that uh, him and Casey Atwood's uh, age doesn't add up to mine. And I seen those guys in the mirror. I thought, oh, this is not good. And then I looked in the mirror the last lap. I seen Atwood backwards, and I said, this is not good. So uh, it did get us a win. Hopefully everybody's okay. The old lion kept the young cubs behind him today. Well, I tell you, there's a lot of people I got to thank. My sister's birthday, my, my parents, you know. Steve DeLuca helps my, me and my parents out a lot. Uh, Kool-Aid. And once again, James Finch in this race team. Mark Reno. Uh, Allen Engineering, everybody that helps us out, man. Thanks a lot. His wife, Lisa, the kids are here. His mother's here. His dad, who was a great racer, is here. And that's the celebration in Victory Lane. Let's go to Ralph Shaheen. Well, we've got the whole Petty clan down here at the gas pumps. we got Mom, Patty. we got Dad, Kyle. we got Grandpa King, Richard, and Adam right in the middle. And what a great run you had. Tell me about brushing the wall. What happened? Well, you know, we almost did. We didn't. We, uh, you know, coming out of turn two, the car just kept getting tighter and tighter as the, as the race went on. And, uh, you know, they're coming out of two. I was uh, running behind Casey, and it just pushed up, and I had to lift, and that pack got under me. But uh, I'm glad I wasn't in it. Uh, that pack got a little wild there at the end of the race. Some patented Petty smiles going on down here. I think they like what they saw. The best part was Kyle down here with the camera, making sure he gets it all on film. Mike? Well, next time you see Adam, he may have a goatee, sunglasses, and a hat. <laughs> he had a great run today. Randy LaJoy has won the Napa Auto Parts 300. We'll be back to Daytona after this.